The first place to begin is at the Red Canary GitHub repo. So you can simply browse to github.com forward slash Red Canary CO. And then we have a repo here that we've released called Atomic Red Team. Depending on your tool that you're using, you can either choose to download this directly from GitHub using the zip file, or you can do a uh, use the Git tool to check this repo out, work with it, and commit uh, changes or uh, recommendations. I've already gone ahead and done this. I've simply downloaded this into my directory here and extracted the Atomic Red Team, and you can see I've got the catalog here. Now, what I'd like to do is take a look at an actual attack and how you would conduct this in your environment. So if we browse back to the main page, we can see that the MITRE ATT&CK framework is cataloged into three different groupings. We have the Windows Techniques, Mac, and Linux. Let's say we're interested in a Windows Technique. Once you browse to the Windows Techniques, you can see across the top of the framework are various tactics that an adversary might execute. And down inside of the grid, then, are specific details about that particular technique. So you have tactics across the top, techniques down in the grid. So there are a number of different techniques here. The one that I'm interested in today is something called RedServe32. So a little background on this utility. This is a tool that I found while conducting a red team exercise back in the spring of 2016. Uh, I published a blog about it. It's subsequently become a pretty popular tool for both red teams and attackers to use. So all of the information about this particular tool is available uh, in several references that uh, MITRE has collected and examples of attackers or adversaries actually using this capability. So RedSurf32, so you understand what the attack is. This is where an attacker can leverage the fact that they already have execution on a machine. They want to reach out to the internet and pull down existing payloads or scripts and execute those on your box. This is a signed trusted binary, so it often bypasses uh, various defense mechanisms, antivirus, whitelisting, etc. So that's why you'll actually see this technique classified under two different tactics, defense evasion and execution. Okay, so we, we now know that attackers can do this thing called RedServe32. What does it actually look like, and how would you test to see if your endpoints are prepared for this type of attack? Well, that's where we feel like the Atomic Red Team fits in really well. We can simply go over to the Atomic Red Team repo, browse into the Windows folder, browse into Execution, and locate the RedServe32 attack. Now, we have tried to keep this very, very basic to provide your teams the ability to take what we've um, demonstrate here and add that to your framework, test against your solutions, uh, there's, there's such a variety in the marketplace, we felt like the best way we could serve people right now is to provide the minimalist scripts in order to allow for you to generate the telemetry or noise that you need to try and define or find. You can see there's two ways to actually conduct this attack. You can see we've also got a reference back to the binary framework if you started here and wanted to go back the other way. You can either execute a scriptlet local or remote. So you may be asking yourself, well, what is a scriptlet? What is this SCT file? We've defined one and provided an example on the Git repo. Most of what you'll see in these 24 lines of code is simply comments about how to use or detect this particular event. At the, at the outset, I guess you will, this com scriptlet has an XML file, but what's important is inside of that XML file, you'll find VB script or J script that an attacker might want to execute. Now in this situation, we're just going to run calc in a benign test, but we should be able to sense or detect that an attacker has executed this code, they've reached out making a network connection, and pulled in some additional capability. Let's see what this looks like. So there's a number of different ways you can execute this attack. If we actually go back before I do this, if we back up and look at the command redserve32, slash s means suppress any of the warnings so that it runs silently. If it, there's an error, the user's not notified. Slash u simply means execute the unregister block or execute the code inside of the registration tag. This is important because it allows the attacker to leave no registry keys that actually install the scriptlet. It just executes the code and moves on. 
slash i, you can think of this as the location of the scriptlet, and then scrob j dll, which is actually the script host environment that's going to execute the script. So we need to run this attack in our environment and see if it gets detected. So we can browse to the example. We can either download it and run it locally, or we can actually just grab the URL here and execute. And that's what I've actually done in this example. So I've actually already copied it to my clipboard for the sake of the demo. You can see the uh, path is the same. So regserv32, suppress the error, run the registration block with slash u, run it from this get page, and load scrobj. So we should run this, and we should generate the calc execution. Now, let's go see what that's going to look like in our logs. Again, different platforms have different uh, ways of instrumenting their environment. If we jump down here, uh, and just for the sake of the demo, I've already identified these events. So here you can see the process create event. We can see the command line reaching out to that particular URL to pull in the scrobj. And we can actually see the network connection that was made by regserv32 we can actually see the IP address that it connected from and to and what port number it connected on. So this is, again, a great tool as a starting point for collecting endpoint data. It's called Sysmon. It's from Microsoft. I don't encourage you to leave the logs locally. You always want to be sure you forward those uh, into a central repo. Now, it's really up to you and your organization to think about if that attack occurred, and it got past my other defenses, how would we actually detect this using the collection that we're using here? So again, in summary, the red team or the atomic red team repo provides your organization a way to quickly test many of the techniques that have been cataloged in the MITRE attack framework. We don't have complete coverage. We, we hope to get feedback from you and the community on ways to improve and add additional coverage, but we certainly think it's a good place to start. I hope this has been helpful. Feel free to contact me, research at redcanary.com if you have questions or feedback. Um, that's all I have. Again, talk to you soon.